So here's the deal. We have, and, and again, this is a super casual conversation around bringing in Zoom. Uh, I want to answer all of your questions. I want to see where you're struggling, bringing either Zoom in or a presentation in um, to there, there are all kinds of different scenarios you guys have thrown out in the past. And so what I'm trying to do is understand what you need help with so that I can tell you today um, and answer your questions, but also do a really succinct video that answers all of those questions. So that's going to come out soon, but I wanted to really just figure out what it was that I need to include in that video for you all. So the deal is, you know, uh, oftentimes, People are using, who's using an older Mac to run your Ecamm production? <laughs> I see that a lot. Um, but um, So I see that a lot, that people are using like older Macs to run your production. And, um, you know, the more that we go into 2021, um, the more people are doing speeches and presentations through um through live streaming, right? Um, and so one of the things that I wanted to kind of cover today is bringing your presentation. I do speeches all the time, right? So I bring in my presentation from a completely different computer. I set up a laptop and I'm not using the resources of the streaming computer in order to run that presentation. That means that my streaming computer is free to do what it does best and what it needs to do to have a smooth production stream. Right? You're already loading in your assets. Um, having Keynote open, huh, in addition to streaming and having Ecamm open, it can cause you problems. So um, what I wanted to kind of show you right now, and uh, I'm finding a lot of people don't know this. Um, here we go. So I've got my laptop right, that has Keynote on it. Um, and then I've got an adapter, an HDMI to USB-C adapter, because this is a newer Mac. Um, but if you have an older Mac, I have an older Mac over there that I could use for the same thing and not use the adapter because it has an HDMI port built in. Uh, oh, I'm about to. <laughs> okay, putting the water away, putting the tea away, hold on. <laughs> um, and then I'm using a capture card Right, so I'm, I'm bringing the uh, capture card, the Elgato HD 60S Plus in this case, um, to bring this in as a second camera to Ecamm. Okay, so if I go into demo mode here, uh, you'll see that now the, I just need to unplug it and plug it back in. Hang on. <laughs> I was, I had to reset everything right before we went live. Okay. Um, here we go. So now you'll see that we have the uh, streaming computer, or sorry, the uh, second camera as an option, which is my keynote presentation. So if I open keynote and hit play on that, right? So we have then the ability to bring that in completely separate, not going to it, hold on. Or if we do something like this where we have, and yes, I am saying two computers. So I know that not everybody has two computers. I'm just saying if you have an older laptop or something that you can use for this purpose, um, then you will offload resources for this purpose. So what I'm gonna do now is bring the computer that's connected to this capture card in as a camera overlay. So if you're not familiar with the camera overlays, it's in the overlays section and creating camera overlay, okay? And then that is going to allow me to uh, choose the capture card. And now I have my entire keynote presentation that I can fit into this PIP. And then I wanna make sure that I bring that under the, uh, the image, the frame, so that it's not weird. Um, then we go, then I have my keynote. Keynote presentation, I'm doing my speech. I can go back and forth between my main camera and my PIP, create an engaging speech, right? Um, or if you're wanting to, I mean, this isn't just this, it's not just keynote presentations, right? 
Um, you can use your iPad, absolutely. You can use your iPad or iPhone as the second computer for sure. Um, you just need the correct adapters, right? So uh, you just need, a, you need to bring it in as uh, with that capture card, but yes, you can totally do that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, iPad, so, so many people have iPads, same philosophy works. So, but the, the beauty of it is, is that you're removing those resources from your main stream computer, right? So that is super, super powerful. Let's say you're just doing a demo of a website and maybe your computer is struggling a bit. You can do the same thing. Use an iPad, use an iPhone, use your comp another computer. Whatever you have, you can remove those resources to free up some space or some, yeah, some resources for your streaming computer. I know that y'all are asking a whole bunch of questions, so we are gathering those. And let's see, let me see what else we have. Um, I'm looking for relevant questions to this particular topic real quick, and then I can wrap back around on other things. Um, okay, Joel says, is there a reason to use capture card versus NDI? Great question. Um, NDI can definitely be a great option for this as well. You can absolutely connect your laptop, your iPad from through NDI, which is a wireless connection essentially, um, into to, to be seen to being seen as a camera source in Ecamm. Um, so that is absolutely an option as well. I don't love relying on something that is not hardwired. So if I'm going to be delivering a speech and I'm being paid for that keynote, then I'm never going to rely <laughs> on something that could fail or disconnect um, and wireless. And, and, you know, things can happen regardless, but that, that hardwire connection is absolutely more um, uh, reliable. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> reliable. <laughs> um, yes, you can absolutely bring in a Windows machine as well. Yes, absolutely. So if you have a PC lying around um, and you're streaming through Ecamm, all you need is this capture card, right? So it doesn't matter what capture card we're talking about, but you just need to bring it in via HDMI to the capture card um, or, uh, yeah. And then uh, this one is like USB to the iMac where I'm streaming from Ecamm. So you can absolutely do that as well. Let's see. Um, Uh, so, uh, I prefer NDI if you're using the scan converter on the same device. Yeah, that, that's, um, a good, a good thought there as well. Um, no extra computer necessary, no extra computer necessary, but will definitely increase CPU usage. And that's the thing that I'm trying to avoid you guys doing because so many people are still using older computers. Um, but yeah, so like <laughs> you have to learn kind of what your computer can handle and what it can't and go from there. Um, let's see, yeah, I agree. There are too many things that can happen where with wireless connection. NDI is pretty reliable, but still I have had to disconnect it and connect it while live. Um, and that was uh, uh, a little uncomfortable. So you don't have to show a secondary display with this. Oh. So yeah, correct. So if you're using a separate computer, that computer is your display. When I'm running my keynote, right? I've got the keynote. Try not to make everything fall here. Um, and so then I've got the keynote here and I'm just flipping from the keyboard itself so that I can run that production. So that is, uh, I mean, it's super, super simple, right? Super simple. But um, also, let's see if I have any, before I move on to the next thing I wanna share, uh, what if I, okay. Uh, if, you, if you were looking to get overlays like what I'm using, um, you, can, uh, you can create them yourself if you know how to do. Uh, that is something that we offer here at the Livestreaming Pro store. Um, 
So we have done for you graphics in all kinds of styles. Uh, we have countdown timers, we have pips, we have overlays and frames, all of that kind of stuff, different styles, different colors. So that can help there. Um, <laughs> lots of great questions. The, 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 the uh, Ecamm team is saying, <laughs> okay. Uh, so again, if you have questions, please do put Q in front of them so that we can gather them. I have got, um, I've got my team, well, well my team, Ecamm's team, all gathering questions from the various chat rooms that we're on today so that I don't miss anything. Um, so yeah, it, Yash, well, sorry, I'm gonna come back to those questions that aren't about this topic. Let's see. Region seven, I do presentations sometimes two to three times a week and I want to step up my messages as a one-man show. I've already invested in Ecamm Stream Deck, A10 Mini, and uh, Livestream Studio. Well, you don't need all of those. How do I clean this? Clean up this setup? You don't need Livestream Studio if you're using Ecamm. Uh, so all you need is Ecamm. Uh, I, <laughs> um, so those things, I mean, it, it depends on what camera you have. Like, there's a lot to that question. So, um, uh, Regen, I'm not sure how to guide you there. You have uh, the setup that you need in terms of the software and hardware, but you're gonna need necessarily, maybe maybe you need to get a better camera or something like that. But the Stream Deck is really what's gonna help you run a one-person production and make it a lot smoother. David, um, all of this pit presentation happiness can be sent to Zoom using the virtual camera, right? Correct. So, um, and that's what I, that's what I do uh, oftentimes, right? So, in order to get this, hold on. <laughs> um, in order to get your presentation, um, then what you need to do, and you want to send it into Zoom, what you're going to need to do is put as click output video, or sorry, virtual cam. And if you haven't installed virtual cam yet, it will ask you to install it. And then you just make sure it's on. And then when you open up Zoom, ooh, <laughs> hold on. Okay, um, when you open up Zoom, that was infinity effect there, but I'm trying to show you. So you're actually choosing Ecamm Live Virtual Cam from the menu options instead of your camera itself. When you do Ecamm Live Virtual Cam, then every camera switch you have is going to, um, it, 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 there's no way to get around that infinity effect, but mm -hmm. you, hopefully you, you, you get what I'm doing there. So just choose the camera, the Ecamm virtual cam in the camera source inside of Zoom, and there you go. Your full production is being brought into Zoom. That is freaking awesome. I wow people all the time for interviews that I'm doing, for presentations um, and you know that that wow effect because it is high quality production coming into Zoom, um, it, it it creates instant credibility. Uh, people are impressed with it, but by default you. And so there's this thing that happens in people's brains that gives value to you uh, when they see that higher quality production. So instead of coming into Zoom from just your webcam, bring in your entire production. That will make a big difference. In fact, Barry Friedman, who you saw on the screen earlier from one of my presentations, he brought in a $100,000 contract by doing just that. He wasn't selling live streaming or video production services or anything like that. He just had a client meeting or a potential client meeting, a discovery call. He brought his entire production into Zoom and he sold a $100,000 contract on the spot because no one had ever shown up like that. Um, because they took that to mean this is our guy. So that stuff happens all the time. Um, okay. If you, if you guys were worried about, I think somebody was worried about like that happening in Zoom, that infinity effect, don't worry. That will not happen to you. It's just because I'm in demo mode and I was showing you my screen that was showing a screen that was showing, you know, so it goes, it goes into that. Don't worry. That's not a thing that you have to worry about. Um, is a Rich Graham, is there an easier way to make a shared screen fit into the bigger window of the PIP? The, I mean, 
what I just showed you is very easy, in my opinion, at least. Um, so if you, it, it, you know, you're, you're looking at basically just adding the camera overlay and then resizing it to that. So um, it, it, what, what's hard about that, I guess? <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. What's, what's hard about that? Um, and do, why do you need something easier? Uh, I feel like that's a really, really easy way because it gives you full control. That's what I love about the custom option, right? Um, in here, um, so if you're, when you're choosing the camera source, you can choose custom. And then you have like, I mean, you have all kinds of control from that perspective. So that is super powerful. Okay. Hey, Frederick. Um, Frederick didn't put a cue in front of his question, but I just happened to see it. Uh, do you know if Zoom limits resolution on what it thinks is a webcam? Yeah, so Zoom is always going to degrade the quality. So your eCam production that you're bringing in to Zoom um, is going to not look as good as if it were on a stream because Zoom degrades quality. Um, it's just part of their process and their technology. So it's not ever going to look as good as a stream on YouTube or Facebook can. But it's still like, because of the interactivity features of Zoom, it's still high quality enough that people are like, what? <laughs> I think that's exactly what they're like, what? <laughs> Sam, um, <laughs> well, Rich, get used to it. <laughs> I mean, you can, I mean, here, Rich, I mean, this is your other option, but you know, if you're, if you're doing something that's on the same computer, uh, you can just click share screen. Hold on. And then we're going to, uh, activate my pit. Whoa, that is something about my computer is having a little bit of a hard time. Hold on. Turn there just for you. We're going to go into pip. Where's my pip? There it is. Where'd it go? Ah, it's not working. <laughs> Something's not working. What am I doing wrong? Um, <laughs> when I go into demo mode, it's actually kind of causing more of my pro more problems from me. Sorry. Okay. Um, okay. Just take it, taking a look at notes from the team. Uh, okay. Anyway, but Rich, you can go into that pip mode, right? That I was showing, uh, that screen share mode, and then there's a pip and then you don't have to resize to a frame. Uh, so that's your simple solution, but it's just not going to look as high quality without frames. Um, so there you go. Um, using, okay. Answered that. Okay, so Joel with a follow-up was assuming if you have both computers on wired connections rather than using NDI with wireless is what I meant. So it's actually hardwired in the way you're talking about. So yeah, you could do that as well. Um, a lot of people don't feel don't want to learn NDI. Um, you know, so that's a, a another that's another thing for people to learn versus just plugging in. Uh, so that's you know that's up to you. So if I, Joel, I know you can handle that. Um, okay. Um, so Kelly is asking, I inherited an HDMI switcher. Could this also work like the capture card? It's still in the box. I have no clue what I will need it for. <laughs> I also thought about uh, a monitor. Um, so uh, uh, an HDMI switcher isn't going to produce the same results. Uh, that's great for like switching between monitors and stuff, um, but it's not going to be the same result as a capture card. What's up? Says... Um, I, I don't, I don't know. The, I don't know exactly what's up, um, in terms of what's faster in milliseconds, like, um, oh, NDI versus capture card versus wired internet. Um, I, I don't know if the capture card versus NDI is going, uh, they, if there's a, a difference in the milliseconds there, um, but maybe somebody in the community does. Let's see. Hey, where did my place go? No, I lost my place. 
uh, if you're asking uh, like questions outside of the topic for today, I'm going to come back to you guys. So hang tight. But I want to make sure that we get through these different uh, conversations around this. Using a second Mac and capture card would save memory on the streaming Mac because you wouldn't need to run Keynote. Keynote, but it was a really a big saving CPU versus usage crunching video. This is a heavy test. Using a second computer and capture card would save memory on the streaming Mac because you wouldn't need to run Keynote, but is it really a big savings? Yes, it is. It is for some people. For me, no. I can run Keynote on this iMac. It's a new iMac. Um, and it's 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 a gut a gut, it's got good guts. <laughs> but um for some people, it's a big difference for for freeing up that CPU usage. So it these are options for for you, right? So you need to figure out what your computer can handle. Um, okay, so Eric, great question. I meant to, to answer this really before. Can I play a video on another computer and bring it into my live this way? You could, but what it's not gonna do is bring in audio. So you're not gonna bring in audio from that from that capture card. Um, and so if you have video or if you have audio, like you're not gonna bring in Zoom unless you use something like Loopback. Um, so you could set up a whole thing with Loopback, um, uh, uh, audio uh, mapping. Um, and then you might be able to bring in that audio from like Zoom or from your presentation. But, um, you know, I never do presentations with audio anyway, just because it's a pain in the boute. <laughs> but yeah, you could do video if there wasn't any audio that you needed along with that. What do you have and use often? Ecamm? <laughs> um, let's see. Um, <laughs> that's a great, so, um, this is kind of on topic. Paul says, uh, you're a great people person. Uh, what's a good conversation topic on a zoom call before everyone arrives? It depends on the group, to be honest. Um, I, I will go anywhere from, uh, you know, what'd you have for breakfast this morning to, uh, it depends on how you, how much, you, how well you know the people, you know, if, if they're complete strangers, then I would get a stack of, you know, uh, you could, you could just do random like check-ins. Where are you watch? Where are you coming from? You can start off the conversation that way. Um, you could ask some questions from like those cards, those games, you know, that have like, uh, uh, conversation starters, uh, but some of those might be a little too hard. You want it, you want it to be easy and, uh, you know, not, not a big, a big ask for people. Kind of like how I talk about the bit, the easy wins. Okay. So many questions. Um, uh, Joy, is the assistance used for monitoring your chats or as a backup in case something goes wrong? Um, so Joy, I think what you're asking is because I'm, because people are gathering the questions. So, so my chat, I'm streaming to four different locations. My chat goes by really fast. So, um, I don't always see everybody's questions. And so we have people on both, um, side or on all of the different, um, uh, streams, uh, making sure they're gathering questions in one place. And in this case, it's Slack, uh, during our Ecamm shows on Thursdays in, uh, on my, on live streaming pros, uh, we gather those in like workplace chat so that, because we're not going to Ecamm channels, right? So like, I just have people kind of gathering those up so that I don't miss anything important. Um, and I want people to feel like they're still getting their questions answered. I am keeping an eye on chat, but I don't see everything. And so it's really, you know, when you have, when you get to the point where you have lots of conversation, um, there's conversation and then there's questions and the two things are totally different. So I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anything. I think that answers your question. Um, okay. What's the difference between Ecamm and OBS? Um, so they're both live streaming softwares. Um, I, my Ecamm is by far my favorite. I find OBS, um, to be clunky and, um, it has some problems, uh, that our students tend to find 
Um, they find they tend to have more audio issues than is necessary. <laughs> um, but OBS is a great free, you know, software, but I find it to be way too clunky and um, too complicated for most people to use. Um, Ecamm itself is just spectacularly simple from a UI perspective, and um, it does so much uh, in terms of the functionality. So they've done a really, really good job at uh, keeping it simple and um, making it powerful. Let's see, Maggie, I have a slideshow with a music track on it in MOV format. I wanna show it and pip me singing over it in a circle. Can I do that on green screen? Um, yeah, so you're not going to bring that in from a different computer since it has a music track, but you could bring that in and, um, you can literally just, hold on, let me see why this isn't working. There we go. <sighs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. I see what's happening. I see what's happening. Hold on. I'm messing with things live. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna go into demo mode. Um, so what you you can do is you can load in, you know, your video file. Um, let's say so this is just a lot of people have been asking me, can you? This is a tutorial video that I did, and see how I have a pip here. So this just comes from this button right here. And then you can make this a circle or whatever you want. And you could go there. And so you could play the video and then have you positioned like this. This would be the super simple and easiest way to do that. Whoa. Did we just get Anthony super sticker, 2799 super sticker. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Really appreciate you. Happy New Year to you, Anthony. Um, anyway, so hopefully that answered your question. Oh, and Anthony says, can you go through the quick steps on setting up live link in private Facebook groups? I'm getting uh, lots of questions on this. Um, so I can't show you because I'm live. So, but essentially it's in the destination section. So, I think I think that's what you're asking is just how to go live to a Facebook group. Um, in the destination section, when you're not live, it'll show destinations down here, uh, and then that will uh, allow you to choose the the pro. Like I have videos about this about how to choose those things. So maybe I'm misunderstanding you. Um, are you now? The thing is, in groups, people um, do have to give you permission to see them. So when you go live, Ecamm gives you the option of including a link to post in your description that's going to a group. Um, and then those people have to uh, approve you to see their Facebook profile picture and their name. Otherwise, it just says uh, Facebook user <laughs> in a generic photo. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that answers your question, Anthony. Let me know if not. Um, okay, so for four to six person video round table, would you use Ecamm interview versus Zoom? Um, I would, but if you have, okay, so this is the other thing I wanted to talk about, which is Zoom. So because Zoom has audio, right, you're not going to be, unless you do more complicated things like the loopback, which isn't that bad, but still, um, you're not going to be able to bring in your Zoom audio into your Ecamm production. So like if you had, if you were trying to do an interview that way, um, but what you can do is you can go, um, let me go to demo mode. Um, you can go to output sharing window and turn this on. Okay, so as soon as you do that, then you wanna open up your Zoom window. Did I already start a meeting? Do I have a meeting going on? Hold on, <laughs> hang on. I have to find my Zoom window. Ooh, there we are. Okay, <laughs> so, um, Okay, my Zoom window was down here. So when you're in Zoom, then what you can do is, uh, sh sorry, share. So let's say you have you know six people in Zoom. You can share 
And then you're looking for the Ecamm sharing window right here. Share computer sound. And if you're doing a video clip, you can click that and then share. <laughs> And basically what you're doing is sharing the Zoom window into Ecamm. Uh, so that's how you would, that's how you would do that. Um, and now I have to stop sharing. I do. It's like, <laughs> change this, change that. Um, so hopefully that answers that question. Thank you so much, Anar, for the super sticker. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. I don't know. I guess I don't have my super chat window active or something today. Here we go. Oh, I wasn't in demo mode. Was I not in demo mode? I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's do that again. <laughs> I thought I was in demo mode. Okay. So in demo mode, what you're going to do is go to, this is why I'm doing a super casual one today, because these things are better done in a tutorial style, in like a recorded video where you can work out all of the, the kinks and stuff. But, um, so I'm, I'm taking all of your questions and I'm gonna condense them down into a video. So we're doing output, virtual cam, and then turn on, okay? And no, sorry, I'm, I'm totally going to, okay, reset. When you're trying to bring in Zoom from, your, from the same computer, and you have like six people or more on Zoom and you want to bring them into your production, then what we're gonna do is output sharing window on. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> sharing window on, okay? And then inside of Zoom, uh, what you're gonna do is click, um, uh, you're gonna have your video, but you're gonna click screen or share screen and then in the options that you have, you're gonna look for Ecamm Live sharing window. And then click share computer sound if you need, well, obviously if you're gonna be doing an interview there. Uh, and then share, and then you will be sharing, essentially see the green uh, box around here, you're gonna be sharing that window. So uh, that's how you do that. In you can bring in more people um, through an interview. Um, because Ecamm for now is uh, four people plus you, so five total. <laughs> I lost my place again. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, Joel, are there settings in Zooms to, Zoom to maximize the quality delivered to Zoom users? Um, seems like the original sound quality might be good. Any settings on that? We have a video on the Live Streaming Pros channel about Zoom settings. So watch that. Um, then we walk you through exactly what you need for, uh, for that. But at the same time, it's really, you're never going to get as high quality as you want. It's just not going to happen on Zoom. Uh, Fender, hopefully I just answered your question about screen share with Zoom. If not, just let me know. Is there less lagging lag bringing in Zoom interview on another computer into Ecamm than interview mode? Interview mode has been giving me a, a pretty big delay. Well, again, you're not going to get the, like, I would highly recommend using interview. Um, you shouldn't be getting a delay. If you're seeing a delay, then... I, I don't know whether you're talking about between you and your guests, you shouldn't have a delay. If that's happening, reach out to the Ecamm support team uh, so they can make sure that uh, they look into that. Gospel Time Brog Hosting says, how do you put limit time limits on the overlay? Oh, um, so if you're gonna do that, you, you basically need to set up a countdown timer um, that in, that moves to the, you need an invisible countdown timer. That's my hack. Um, I shared this with my streamer accelerator group um, when I discovered it. I was like, well, this is one way we can move from an overlay automatically from one you know scene to another uh, until they give us you know controls around that. But I, I've done, um, when I wanted to do that, I've done a, an invisible countdown timer. You have to like make it invisible uh, by hiding or changing the color or whatever to match your background. 
Um, and then it click the go to next scene when finished button, and then it'll automatically go after a certain amount of time. Um, let's see, virtual cam, ecam screen sharing is often blurred in Zoom. What can I do? Um, so we have, there is an article on the ecam site about um, that specific situation. So hopefully Caleb has linked you to that article. Uh, Giovanni, do you have a tutorial about of what you talk about to integrate Zoom. Well, that's, again, that's what I'm doing today is learning where you're struggling so that I can make sure that I am answering those questions in a short tutorial. So look for that to come out soon. Um, Robin, set up using my iPad as a teleprompter above my monitor to the left of the camera looks weird when I'm following the script. Ah, um, well, again, this is off topic, but, uh, yeah, you're, <laughs> a t the point of a teleprompter is so that it's right in front of the camera lens. If you have it off to the side, it will look like you are looking off to the side. It's going to look weird. Um, so you want a, to set yourself up with a prompter. And in fact, um, the... Padcaster is, is, there we go, the Parrot Padcaster uh, is one that just slips on the lens there. And I've used that a few times. With my 16 millimeter lens, I have to crop in to avoid um, seeing the prompter frame here. Uh, but yeah, so there's nothing you can really do. You can, whew, I have in the past tricked the eye um, by sitting off to the side and looking like past the monitor or past the lens to the iPad or to the monitor to read. Um, but it's really tricky to get that right. Really tricky. But I've, I've accomplished it before, so it's possible. But I would just recommend getting some, getting a proper teleprompter if you need one. Um, and, and when I say proper, like this is good, um, but when you go Bluetooth prompters, you can run into problems. So never, ever, 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 ever rely on that um, while you're live uh, because that can go wrong so quickly. Um, I have an LCD prompter uh, set up for my prompter usage that I love. And I, I much prefer the LCD version versus the Bluetooth versions. And guys, my comments have stopped updating all of a sudden for some reason. Uh, so, whoa, what just happened? I haven't been in demo mode this whole time, have I? What just happened? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> oh, <laughs> was, I wasn't in demo mode this whole time, was I? There we go. What, what happened? That's so weird. Okay. <laughs> um... Let's see, if I'm doing a Zoom program, I can put it on another computer, then, okay. I don't know what button I pressed. <laughs> um, okay, so if I'm doing a Zoom program, I can put it on another computer, then bring it into my live stream as a camera. Exactly. What I showed you earlier is exactly that. You're bringing in your laptop through a capture card, which will enable Ecamm to see it as a source, as a camera source. So yeah, <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Um, again, if you guys have questions, please add Q in front of your questions so that I can, so that those are gathered for me. I might miss it if it doesn't have a Q in, in front of it. Mr. Gresham, I shine, uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Gresham, uh, you're asking about joining Streamer Accelerator, which is, um, live streaming pros, uh, coaching membership where we offer tech support, we offer strategy support, help coaching to get you better um, results with your live streaming and with your content to grow your audience, to grow your revenue uh, and grow your business. But um, if you have a question specifically about rejoining that program, um, email support at livestreamingpros.com and Callie will get you taken care of. So support at livestreamingpros.com. All right. Oh, Times Masquerade. Could a Discord room play any part in a live stream? You could, um, if you're thinking audio, the audio discussions in Discord. Woo-woo! 
Frederick, 19, basically a $20 super chat. Dude, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you. You don't even have a question that I can answer? Are you just being really good hearted here on the New Year's Eve day? <laughs> um, I'm so excited about 2021. Are y'all? I, I cannot wait to tackle 2021. Like, it's going to be so, so amazing. There's so much planned for you guys. So much planned. We have uh, LinkedIn live streaming coming up in January, uh, which is tomorrow. Ah, not, not, not that show. But um, <laughs> we have LinkedIn. Um, we have all sorts of experts and guests joining us. Uh, we're going to talk about things that we've never talked about uh, on the live streaming pros channels and Ecamm as well on the Go Live Now Thursday shows. We've got just so much value coming your way um, and increasing it all over the place, doing a better job for you than we ever have before. So I cannot wait. I don't know if Ecamm can outdo themselves for development cycles in that, that they did in 2020. Like 2020 was an amazing year for Ecamm. It really came a long way in just a year. They did an incredible job. Glenn and Ken and the entire Ecamm team rocked the rocked the ecamm community's world like seriously um so i'm looking forward to seeing what else they can do in 2021 that is going to take it to an even higher level of production uh with feature sets and new things ah i can't help me that'd be so good oh <laughs> big plans so who's excited about that i know i am <laughs> i couldn't i could barely keep up in 2020 with all of their new things no i didn't see your link <gasps> did you get linkedin what? wait what <laughs> i didn't see it <laughs> see what i was saying i cannot keep up with ecan and their announcements and their new things because they're doing such a great job and i'm one of their ambassadors um so uh we're doing <laughs> yes exactly ecam rocked 2020 for sure everybody's excited everybody is excited okay um let's see so audio from a YouTube playing on a second computer will not come in. I play videos from YouTube and comment on them in my streams. You're going to want to do that um, from the from a second monitor on your computer. Uh, who was that, Eric? So if you um, if you have the CPU to handle that, if you don't, then you're going to need to do some more audio mixing and routing, um, like with loopback or uh, you know. Uh, uh, bigger setup with the mixer, that kind of thing. So you need a bit of a different setup for that if you want it on a different computer. Um, wait, hold on. You can use system audio to bring your audio from Discord into Ecamm Live. Okay, there you go, yeah. That, that's a very good point. Yeah, thanks, Caleb. Um, and there are some fun widgets you can use with OBS and vMix as well, WebM, uh, so not supported on Ecamm. Got it, okay. Um, so yeah, so if you're the Discord question, I never really fully answered that. <laughs> so coming back to that, then yeah, you, um, you use system audio uh, to bring that into Ecamm. So yeah, you could totally do like an audio chat through Discord uh, if that's your thing. Okay. Uh, Josh, uh, can you use Ecamm virtual cam directly into Zoom without adding an audio? Okay, so again, again, if you're gonna do Zoom on the same computer, you can do that. Um, but not through a different computer. Hopefully that's clear. <laughs> right? <laughs> they definitely made 2020 less horrible. <laughs> oh. <laughs> would you would you say that, John? I don't know. I don't know. I'm still quite I'm still kind of deciding. <laughs> um let's see. Um okay, will you bring okay. So you're only going to get a camera overlay function from Zoom if it's on a separate computer. Uh, Caleb, do we have an article about 
specifically Zoom on a different computer using Loopback to bring that in, um, let me know and maybe we can post that in the in the comments in the descriptions. But uh, yeah, so you're you're only going to get an overlay, a camera overlay option functionality from bringing it in from a different source, like a, a new capture card. Um, it's because that's what, that's how Ecamm sees a camera is, is a capture card, right? So you're bringing that in. Um, now, of course, there are caveats to that if you're gonna bring in a camera via e, uh, USB. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. um Eric, great question. Maybe somebody in the community has done this. If not, I will do this. I will test it. Um, Eric's question was, can the audio from the second computer be brought in using the Rodecaster USB channel? That's a possibility. I have not actually tested that yet, but I do like the thought. Um, so maybe if anybody has done that, let us know in the comments. I'll keep an eye on that. Otherwise, I will actually um, test that myself as well and let you know. Ryan, coming out with the $5 super chat. Thank you so much. At the start of 2020, my lives sucked, but once I found you, they went to another level and I started working with a marketing company. Yeah, it's amazing. So, so awesome. Uh, I'm glad that we were able to be a small part of your journey, Ryan, and your success in 2020. Uh, but really, the success is down to you. You're the one who took the action. You're the one who did the work and um, made it happen. So congratulations. Very, very cool. I love it. Um, let's see. Can the audio... We've already answered that. In terms of setting the frames per second, 30 to 60 on Ecamm Live, will it improve Zoom output? Um, Glenn is saying doesn't, he doesn't think that that'll make a difference. So, um, and, and I always use 60 frames per second for my videos. So, um, uh, I, and I don't see much of a difference myself. So I, I would agree with Glenn on that. I really don't think that that's uh, a thing. So, hold on just a second. Hey, down. Hold on. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to do something. Hang on. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see. Next question. I thought viewing YouTube videos on your stream would be a copyright issue. Oh. <laughs> Well, yeah, it depends on what you're doing. It can definitely be a copyright issue. Um, if they're your YouTube videos, then not such a big deal. Um, if they're somebody else's, then absolutely, you can absolutely run into copyright issues. I've, I've, um, I've had that happen on our channels as well. Um, and so you have to be very, very, very careful about what it is you do. So please do not do that. Woo woo! Richard's first Q and A. Woo woo! Yay, Richard! <laughs> Everybody, welcome, Richard. Um, I'm so glad that that you're here. I'm so glad that you were able to take a little time out of your day to join us, and uh, I hope that you'll be back. So, um, for those of you who don't know, the Ecam show. So, Ecam has a lot going on during the week. For me and hosting the Ecamm show, right? So we're live every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific um, uh, here on Ecamm and Live Streaming Pros. My Live Streaming Pros show is four days a week, Tuesday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, and so you can find, you know, lots happening on the Ecamm channel as well throughout the week. You can find us on Live Streaming Pros. You can find us right here on Thursdays. And I don't just cover Ecamm tutorial stuff uh, on Thursdays. Sometimes we dive into audience growth. Sometimes we dive into content generation, um, revenue growth, right? Like all of the things that really make your live stream better. Um, being on camera, your presentation skills, things like that. So all of that you can look forward to more of in 2021. So it's gonna be a good year, like I said. <laughs> it's gonna be a good year. <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, Jennifer. Let's see. Um, next question. Um, uh, capture card devices. Um, so the ones depends on what you can find. Some of them are still difficult to find. Uh, the 
Elgato, anything Elgato is fantastic. But what you want to focus on on Elgato side is if you do the um, HD6, <laughs> I don't have enough slack here, uh, the Elgato HD60S Plus. See the plus sign? Very important. Plus, not the S, the plus. <laughs> Are we on the same page? <laughs> okay, don't get the S, get the S plus. Um, so the S plus or the um, Elgato Cam Link, which I have around here somewhere that I can show you, except I don't know where. I'm in the middle of finishing out my cable management. <laughs> so I don't know where my Cam Link went, but the Cam Link is also a great option as well. Did I get done with the questions? Okay, so um, if you have any other questions about this particular topic, let me know. I know that there were some other questions that were more general, um, and so I'm gonna tackle a few of those at the beginning, that came through at the beginning. Um, how do you do the super chat pop-ups in Ecamm, we are LA asked. So that's super, super simple. Um, here you go to overlays, new widget overlay. Now this actually comes in from a, um, you, you got to do like stream labs or stream elements. Uh, stream labs works the best for Ecamm. Although Glenn, since you're watching <laughs> or, or Caleb, maybe Glenn's not watching anymore, but, um, I saw somebody in the community say that super, that, that stream elements was working really well with Ecamm. Did something get updated? because if so, I missed that. Um, but Streamlabs is what I use for my super chat overlays. And it's literally just bringing in a widget overlay, putting that URL in and then uh, resizing it. So you do need to build it out on the Streamlabs or Stream Elements side. So keep that in mind, keep that in mind. Uh, yes, my entire setup is listed at livestreampros.com slash GLN. GLN for go live now. Uh, RV or TV. Happy New Year, $5 super chat. Thank you. Well, happy New Year to you as well. I hope that everybody is ready to rock and roll. Like I said, uh, Clubhouse is, um, you know, the new thing. <laughs> Whether you join it or not is up to you. Um, I know that Ecamm is uh, going to be doing some regular content inside of Clubhouse. So if you're, uh, you can find um, the, the Ecamm club by either following me, Caleb or Katie. Um, and then of course I am right after this, after I end this stream, follow me, Luria Petrucci on clubhouse. I'm going to be doing some testing because tomorrow morning at 9am Pacific, I will be co-hosting with Michael Stelzner, um, and from social media examiner. And then also, uh, I've got a discussion with Molly Mahoney coming up on clubhouse as well. Don't have a date set yet for that, but I'll let you know as soon as I do know as well. Uh, yeah. So look for the orange E at the bottom of the profiles that shows the clubs that we're in. So yeah, perfect. Um, but yeah, so, uh, Anyway, I don't know where I was. I was going to say something else. Um, <laughs> Carl asked, does live streaming instead of uploading pre-recorded videos hurt you at all in the YouTube algorithm? There is mixed feedback because, <laughs> because it depends on your channel and what you train the algorithm to expect from you and what you train your viewers to expect from you. So algorithms are trainable as I'm saying, right? And so when you upload, you know, recorded videos only for years, then it expects recorded videos. And so sometimes it may not know what to do with live just yet. So you need to give it a little time. If you're only doing lives and then upload a recorded video, then it doesn't know what to do with that. So it's a, it's a different functionality, but both are beneficial. So, um, I actually use, uh, I use um, very intentional decisions, right? When it comes to uh, when it comes to this type of thing, it's uh, yeah. So you need to you need to know what you're trying to accomplish, and if you're if you're just starting out, then doing a combo of both will help train that algorithm. Hopefully, that helps. 
Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, I did not like it um, at first. Like, well, and I still am not sure about it. And I'm not saying that everybody has to, to join Clubhouse. Like, I was just, yes, it's a new social platform, Clubhouse. Uh, it's, it's iPhone, it's iOS only. Um, and, and I'm not into, like, all of the new fancy things uh, or new shiny objects. And, in fact, I was just saying a couple of days ago on the stream that I was that I that I don't think it's worth my time, but um, there are some things rolling around in my brain, and I will share those with you as I discover whether they're true or not. Um, but I don't want to start you all down a path uh, <laughs> that I haven't figured out yet. Um, so. If you're on there, then great. Then hang out with me. If you're not, then don't worry about it. Um, you know, stay focused on what you need to do for your business. That's something we're going to be talking about in 2021 a lot is making decisions for you. Like I'm going to be harping on being uniquely you in everything you do in your content, in your business, on camera throughout 2021. Um, so that's going to be something we're going to talk a lot about a lot. And sometimes jumping on a new shiny platform isn't the right thing for you, right? Sometimes it is. And so you need to make those decisions, not because everybody is telling you this is the new thing and you're going to, you know, you're going to die if you don't join. <laughs> like, that's never the case. Sometimes focus on a few things is better than all the things. Well, and in fact, uh, maybe not even sometimes, but all the time, but it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, it, it can be a, a distraction. So make sure that you're using any new social platform intentionally. And the only reason that I'm diving into it is because I have some intention behind that. And again, I will share that as I discover whether that intention is, uh, or whether that theory is correct or not. So uh, you, you guys gotta, you guys gotta make your own decisions. Make sure that you're focused on your goals this year. You have to, have to, have to be intentional about what you're accomplishing this year. Um, but my conversation with Molly coming up is going to be about playing a bigger game and um, making decisions based on what you know you need to do to have a bigger impact in the world and reaching those goals that you have that maybe you play small at, that you're not ready to because maybe you're going to make some waves. Um, maybe you're going to you know, have some hardships along the way. Yeah, you are. <laughs> this stuff is hard. Playing a bigger game and being, um, and, and, and going after your dreams is hard. And so that's what we're going to talk about with Molly. And I'm looking forward to that as well. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I think I answered all the questions. Let me just scroll down here. Okay, what uh, Joseph wanted to know, what's the difference between the Camlink 4K and the 60S Plus? Uh, 60S Plus, this is from Glenn directly, uh, has HDMI pass-through, which is helpful if you're using it for gaming since you also connect to a TV, right? So the other side of this is that HDMI pass-through that he was talking about. Uh, so you can connect that and you have, um, but it, like, there's no specific, uh, functionality difference other than that. Awesome. I'll see you there, Daniel. <laughs> Let's see. I think there was, um, oh, Walton, do you have any tips, tricks, or products, or even hacks for cable management? Yes. Lots of them. Um, I have a series. Oh, I'm so excited. So in January, we're going to be releasing the series of videos about my studio setup. It's been months uh, that I've been working on this series and I've been waiting to, to finish it out. Basically, I had to like start it and go through the process of the whole studio setup um, and then finish it out before we can release the first one. Uh, you'll see why as we release the series. But um, this is like cable management is a, an entire video in that series. You're going to love it. It's going to be awesome. And I'm giving you all my crazy tips and tricks. I'm unfortunately good at cable management. <laughs> it's not something I want to claim, <laughs> but um, it's... It's something that I'm good at because I'm an organized person and I think 
very practical and logically, but uh, I, I'm giving you all my tips and tricks in that one. So look forward to that. I'm so looking forward to behind the scenes as well. Oh yeah, so, so awesome. Okay guys, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm jumping over, as soon as we end this, I'm gonna dance this baby out, so put your, your dancing shoes on. As soon as I end it here, I am gonna jump on over to Clubhouse and do some testing. <laughs> Since y'all, um, since I have like co-hosting sessions coming up, I need to make sure that I know what I'm doing in there while actually speaking. I've only listened so far to other people. So uh, if you want to join me, Clubhouse, Laurie Petrucci, and uh, we'll play. <laughs> we'll just keep hanging out for a little while. How does that sound? All right, you guys, um, you, hopefully you have your dancing shoes on because it's time to dance this baby out. I always forget. I don't, I didn't put a dancing, a dance mode on my stream deck for this particular profile. How dare me? So now every time I have to go find it. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, thank you so much. Great, great questions. I'm gonna turn all of the questions into a video. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I understood like what questions you had, where were you struggling when it comes to this type of setup stuff? So look forward to a, a condensed video about all of that. Thank you, Robin, for joining me. Let's dance it out.